If you're in this dating world, you know, essentially everyone wants to be a catch, right? Or you want to feel like you are someone that's valued. You want to be pursued, but you don't want to be chased, right? Because it's kind of creepy when a person chases you and they don't get a hint. They don't, they don't pick up on what you're putting down. They don't sniff what you're putting down. But when a person kind of is mysterious and they just they, they, they gradually pursue after you, that feels a little bit better, right? It feels safe. It feels like, all right, this person has some type of control in themselves. But when they don't have control in themselves, you start to wonder whether or not they have it all there, you know, if they're just highly neurotic. And if you're someone that say, well, I think I do want to be chased, I have a strong case here that you may have some type of cluster B personality because the only people who have low self-esteem, low sense of self-value, will need to be chased. They need that constant uh, validation and that constant need for praise because people who are healthy-minded, who understand themselves, who understand the way that real relationships and healthy relationships work, know that you don't need this constant praise and constant, um, constant contact and constant pursuit. In today's video, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about why you should never chase. Thank you for sticking around. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I want to thank you guys for always being here. So today we're going to be talking about why you should never chase someone. So I want you to picture this picture, right? Imagine this. You know, if you guys have ever watched um, the, the the detective shows or the spy shows, maybe like our movies, 007, my, one of my favorites is Dick Tracy. You know how like when someone's being pursued in that show or in the movie, um, one person is kind of trailing the other person and you know the first person being pursued they kind of feel a little bit weird like they may pick up on it and they're like all right that's just weird after a while you start to see that a person picks up on it like they clearly know that this person is coming after them so they pick up their pace and then the person behind them pick up their pace and next thing you know they're in a full-blown sprint trying one trying to get away and the other one trying to catch them you know when it comes off as kind of you know stalker is creepy or if they person the person know that they're they're a high target or a high value person, they know that there may be some people coming after them. So when you start to pursue people like that, long story short, you kind of come off as like a stalker or someone that's kind of creepy. So, you know, it's, it's not a good look to be a creep. So and today I wrote down four, four reasons as to why you shouldn't chase in a relationship, two in a relationship, two if it's someone that's your ex. And the reason that I had this this idea is because one of my clients um, was was asking me about what's a good what's a good and bad idea or what's a good you know kind of like a limit or a good boundary for when you decide to pursue someone versus chasing because there's a huge difference between pursuing and chasing. And so I, I, I was like, all right. So I went ahead and wrote down a couple. I told him I make a video form, and so that's what I want to talk about. But it's it's interesting how um, people will try to justify some of the things that they're doing because they just want to do what they want to do and they can't control their emotions. They can't control their anxiety. So they come up with all these reasons as to why they should do it. Like one thing that they use is like a good scapegoat is attachment styles. Like someone says, oh, well, they're fearful of void or they're dismissive. I should probably you know, not abandon them and go after them a little bit more. Like, well, if you remove attachment styles, period, you know, it's good practice not to do any of that, right? I mean, it, it's, it's okay to like lay down the breadcrumbs and allow for them to come back to you at a healthy pace. But when you're full blown chasing, over texting, double texting, triple texting, driving past the house or whatever it is, it's creepy. You know, so just, just don't be a creep. So for the exes, right? Two things I wrote down. Um, you know, first, when you want to reattract someone that's an ex, this is not how you do it. You don't want to chase after them. Like I said before, if they've broken up with you, it's really good that you give them the breakup. You want them to have that pause, that reset, and you want to give them that relief. Because that's always the first stage. When someone doesn't want to break up with someone or the person that they're with, 
it it feels bad like they feel guilty it, it, they almost feel remorse just by wanting to even uh you know to want to hurt you especially if you were someone that was a um a, a good person someone that was constantly um meeting their needs and actually over meeting their needs especially when they they and they realize that I'm not even matching this energy. This person is putting me on this pedestal. So at some point, they took this 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 power role over you in the relationship, in the direction of the relationship. So first off, it's not the way that you reattract someone. There's this quote that my mom had in her, around the house for like ever. It was two birds or two doves or something, and it was in a hallway. And the quote said, if you love someone let them free. If they come back to you, they're yours. And if not, they never was. And uh, every day I would walk past that quote and I remember that quote. But so, for some reason, I had a hard time applying that to my own life and my own dating life. So that's first off. You want to let them go. You know, if, if they feel like this relationship was something that was valuable, they'll come back. And actually, you don't go crazy on me in the comment section, which I know you guys are. Shoot for the streets or whatever. You, you guys read my comment section. They got a lot to say. If they come back to you, that means that the relationship most likely will be stronger than before because they've gotten the opportunity to experience what that life is like. And I know there's a whole lot of different scenarios to play out. If you've, mar if you've been married, if you've been in a 10, 20 year relationship, if you've just been dating for six months, there's a lot there, but the the reason that you really want to let them go too is so you can do your thing and, and figure out if this, if this person is actually for you because you have as much stake in this as they do, right? You're, they're on probation in your life too. They're, essentially, you want to vet them. And I say it takes, about, it takes about eight seasons to get to know someone, really eight seasons because people change during spring. They may, be, they may be a little bit happier, a little bit more bubblier. In the fall, they may have some type of winter depression. You don't know. So it's okay to let them go, right? You let them go. And two, if you don't give them the breakup, you're actually ignoring reality, right? You're ignoring reality and you're not giving them that breakup, which means they're going to start to think that you're a lower value in their eyes because everyone essentially wants a, a prize, right? And if you are putting them on that pedestal, like I said before, and you feel like they're more valuable to your life than you are to theirs, essentially, uh, they're, they're not going to want to be with you anymore because they're going to be wondering, well, I thought this person was most confident, mature, whatever. And now that I'm with them, a good communicator, I thought they were in the beginning, they're just not the person that I thought that they were going to be. Um, and that's why it takes eight seasons. It takes really eight seasons to figure out who a person really is. And also you want to show that you have self-control, right? Because you want to, that's, that's, that's really, uh, when a person is in a relationship or right, if you're in any, any situation, you know, you want to know that your coworkers have self-control and they won't flap the handle. If you go to like out with one of your friends Think about the one guy that, if you guys are guys, the one guy that you know is always going to be losing it. He's going to always be out of control. He's going to be someone that probably starts a fight or something. So you kind of hesitate to go out with them or you feel like, well, this is just so-and-so. He's going to be doing something tonight. So you want to know that you have self-control even in that. A person has self-control in that arena, but also in you know the, the, the love and romantic part of your life. You want to make sure that that person has control over themselves because it's scary when a person loses it and they do all the things that I said earlier where they, they keep calling, they keep texting, and they just can't take no for an answer. If anything, it's really lowering your chances of that person coming back. So you don't want to chase in that area. And for if you're in a relationship with someone, one of my favorite quotes of all times is, you must love a person in such a way that they feel free like Thich Nhat Hanh says. And what that means is you want to give them the opportunity to continue to choose you and pick you where they don't feel like they have to check in with you. They have to text you every morning, every night. They can't go two hours without texting you and knowing that uh, you're going to probably feel some type of way. Now, I know 
every relationship is different. So I don't want to overgeneralize there, but in the healthy relationships that I've seen, there's a nice balance there where a person feels like, all right, I can I can go six hours without texting. They'll be totally fine. They'll be okay without me, you know, constantly checking in with them. So that's the first one. You want to not chase in a relationship because you want to let you want to love them in a way that they feel free. And the second one is it's kind of like what we said before. It lowers your value in their eyes if you are overly possessive and you're you're constantly coming after them and needing constant validation. And it, it, it's, it's a sign of insecurity, right? Because when you are someone that feels like you have a lot of value to yourself, you won't chase after anything. You won't chase after employment. You won't chase after people. You won't chase after pretty much anything. Friends, you know, if friends decide, hey, this isn't a friendship that I want to continue, and you know you're a valuable person, you say, well, you're you're missing out. Sorry. There's a quote that I love, one of my favorite favorite coaches. He says, you know, I, I know I'm valuable. You know, if you want to leave, go ahead. Don't let the doorknob hit you on the way back in. So that's all I have for you today. Appreciate you guys being here. Please like, comment, and share this, this content. You can follow me on Instagram um, and uh, Facebook. I am Coach Court on there. And always remember, when you go be love, you'll never have to find it. Namaste. Mm -hmm.